All the major news stories made simple and easy for your listening pleasure. We'll break it down for a year in key words for the segment. We're joined by Adam in the studio. Good morning. Good morning, Lena. You're a big sports person from what I understand. I know. You're um, incredibly competitive. I've just thought of something when you asked that question. Yeah. Why is bowling not in the Olympics? Uh, See again. That'll be very dynamic, and I think that'll be quite fun. See, but are those are yeah. those a prerequisite to include something as an official sporting event? Olympics, dynamic oh. and fun to watch. I think bowling is right, right. right. No, I agree. But I'm saying, like, what other sports are Because because the there are events that are relatively not dynamic, right? Not fun to watch, but they're part of the Olympic Games. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Because they have curling in the Winter Olympics, which is kind of like is bowling on ice, kind of, isn't it? it I don't know. I'll probably get, I've it, probably triggered a lot of people by saying that. I was going to say, I feel like a lot of curling <laughs> fans would beg to disagree. Right. Isn't it dubbed like the ice chess for some ice, reason? Uh, okay. A lot of strategy involved. You uh, don't slide chess pieces on the court. <laughs> I could. <laughs> you I could, could I, if you're an angler. Have you watched Queen's Gambit? <laughs> <laughs> <She does slide>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So well, we don't know what the criteria is yet. Diane will join us in the studio yeah. to give us that but i think that would be a fun addition bowling why yeah. is it not part of the olympic why is games it not? Uh, if you're a big bowling fan start the petition <laughs> yes why not it would be adam who starts the petition <laughs> all right thanks for giving us your two cents adam let's jump into our keyword news portion as always we're going to try to highlight some of these major headlines for you this morning starting with our covid19 coverage this is our first keyword of the day Nearing six figures. So we've been forewarned. However, daily highs seem to be reaching new heights, and that's of concern. The number of cases is estimated to approach six figures soon, with today's tally predicted to be in the 90,000s. What's the latest? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Sorry, uh, that should be 900,000. Or, no, sorry, 90,000s, 90, yes, right? that's right. I think 90,000 uh, <laughs> would be an entirely different conversation. Right. Okay. But, um, yeah, remember a time where we were kind of gasping at the fact that there were 2,000 daily cases in the country right, uh, right. not so long ago, but now we're kind of numb to the fact that we're seeing these five-digit tallies. Mm. But we're not as alarmed as we used to be, but mm. it is a cause of, uh, for concern nonetheless. Um, there's already more than 85,000 cases as of 9 p.m. yesterday. That's nearly 29,000 more than the same same time yesterday as well um, now uh, the day before rather uh, as cases are counted till midnight it is possible the caseload reported today will mm. exceed 90,000 as you said health experts believe we could see 130,000 to 170,000 daily cases by the end of this month which uh, there isn't a long way to go mm. and it certainly looks to be the case when looking at the recent numbers some say we could even see those figures uh, by as early as next week in mm. fact mm. now the omicron surge is almost doubling the caseload week by week um, and so it won't just be till the end of this month but well into next month as well we'll be seeing a high caseload but the fatality rate has been relatively manageable, which is why mm-hmm. maybe the government and the KDC is not sounding the alarm with right. such urgency. In fact, they're saying that it will be a balancing act continuously. Yeah. And when they revisit these standing social distancing rules, it would mm-hmm. be the in the interest of small business owners. That's right. Uh, and it will be more focused on the critically ill patients as yeah. well. And speaking of those social distancing measures, uh, a revised measures will be announced on Friday, mm-hmm. in fact. And uh, they are likely to be eased rather than toughened Mm. despite the recent surge. Mm -mm. And as you said, it's because the focus is uh, on those small businesses and the critically ill patients as well, which Mm. still remain relatively low, although it has crept up a little bit. Uh, Meanwhile, the government will supply some uh, 50,000 convenience stores nationwide with enough self-test kits for 6.7 million people. That's also part of a new kind of quarantine testing and treatment scheme that Mm. the government is implementing. Uh, The fresh supply is expected to be available from Friday, but this will vary depending on the store and the uh, amount of packages that each each store gets. Mm. Uh, Also from today, patients undergoing treatment at home, these so-called at-home patients, will be able to buy uh, fever-reducing medicines and other prescription drugs at their local pharmacy. They were previously only available at select pharmacies. Uh. 
um, where you got those anti-COVID pills such as Paxlovid from, right. but it's only the Paxlovid and those anti-COVID pills that will still only be available at these designated pharmacies. All right, but the more easily prescribable fever-reducing medications that are a little mm. bit stronger than uh, the over-the-counter mm-hmm. ones that would be made more massively available, right? That's right. All right, thanks for clarifying. Mm-hmm. On to our second keyword of the day. Preparing for school. Which means protocol, new and improved for students. The new school semester is only a couple of weeks away and the government has announced new measures for schools in school. Tell us what they are. That's right. Uh, in Seoul, rather. <laughs> schools in school. Schools in, in Seoul. Did I really say that? <laughs> schools in Seoul. It's okay. But uh, yeah, uh, just for the capital region uh, mm. in specifically, but it is kind of um, implemented nationwide as well. Just a few t- uh, tweaks for the capital uh, mm. only. Now, under the new measure, schools can flexibly change their attendance policy based on a four-stage plan that's been suggested Mm -mm. by the education ministry. At level one, schools run both classes and extracurricular activities, so basically just your normal school day. Mm -hmm. At level two, classes will run as usual. However, extracurricular activities, such as club activities and after-school classes, will be restricted. Uh, Under level three, schools will go hybrid, so a combination of online and offline classes. And level four, Uh, schools will just go completely online, virtual learning. Um, Now, if the number of daily confirmed cases in schools surpasses 3% of the total students, or the number of those who have been restricted from attending classes surpasses 15%, schools can shift to level Mm 2. When schools pass both criteria simultaneously, they can move to level 3. To go completely online, the number uh, the number of confirmed cases in students should be relatively significant compared to the total confirmed cases in the community. So mm. if there's cause for concern of a cluster infection in the community, not just within the school, mm-hmm. then that's when the level four uh, will be implemented. But of course, uh, it is the, each school does have um, some autonomy in the matter as right. well. It's so it's a case by case set of maybe scenario. criteria because yeah. that last bit it does sound a little bit more subjective and depending right. on the situation of the school. That's right. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Uh, on to our third keyword of the day. Biden visits. So U.S. President Joe Biden is considering visiting Seoul in the first half of the year, mm-hmm. most importantly following the presidential election in the country. What's mm-hmm. the latest? Yeah, so South Korean and U.S. officials are reportedly in discussions over the possible visit. Uh, the trip is expected to happen in May and be timed to coordinate with a meeting of the leaders of the U.S., India, Australia and Japan, the so-called Quad Security Group. Now, reports of the visit have come out before, and we've actually spoken about it in this uh, segment uh, before. Now, if uh, the visit is realised, it would be Biden's first trip to Asia as president. Uh, Also, if he comes in May, then it will be when the new South Korean president takes office. Now, the exact date will depend on when his trip to Japan, where that quad meeting is taking place, Mm -hmm. is confirmed. Now, the new president here takes office on May 9th. Mm -hmm. So it is most likely that it will be after that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, that would put a lot of pressure on the new president, in fact, as he or she would have uh, little time to to, uh, prepare for possibly what is the most important (laughs) summit of his or her term. You're absolutely (laughs) right, because it does seem like then the U.S. president would be interested in putting more pressure on South Korea to pick a side Mm. in, for example, the China-U.S. tensions. And where do we place ourselves? Exactly. It it sounds like... (laughs) That's a project for a homework for every president that's been uh, in uh, in office, I guess. All right. So whoever the newly elected president is, uh, he'll hit the ground running in the month of May. Yeah. But you never know because recently because of the Beijing Olympics uh-huh. this is just uh, me conspiracy theorying. <laughs> based, <laughs> based on a lot of um, expert interviews yeah. that you do. There, there's a mm. there's a some sort of anti-China sentiment going around in Korea. In South Korea, yeah, right. Mainly stemming from the Beijing Olympics. Whether that will protrude mm. into the presidential election and the policies of the new president remain to be seen. But of course uh, yeah, that is one area to consider, I mm. guess. All right, leave it there for now. Just say. Just (laughs) say. On to our fourth keyword of the day. Russia pulling back. 
Russia says it is pulling back some of its troops from near Ukraine after a build-up raised fears of a fully-fledged invasion and mm. President of the United States warning that a war is imminent. What's mm. the latest? That's right. It's good that you emphasize says there because it is a claim by Russia's defense ministry, yeah. which is saying that large-scale uh, large scale drills are continuing, but that some units were returning to their bases, albeit still near the border with Ukraine. Right. Uh, Moscow also announced that Russian troops currently engaged in military drills in neighboring Belarus, which shares a border with Ukraine, actually, to the latter's north, would return to their permanent bases when the exercises ended on February 20th and next week. Uh, There has been no independent confirmation of the withdrawal, and international powers, including the US, have reacted cautiously to the announcement. Uh, Biden, for one, said Washington has not yet verified the Russian claims. He added that US analysts indicate that Russian troops remain very much in a threatening Mm -hmm. position. Mm -hmm. And Biden said that Russia had positioned more than 150,000 troops, which is up significantly from the previous estimates of about 130,000. Mm. The president noted, though, that uh, an invasion remains distinctly possible. Now, the Kremlin has always denied it is planning an attack, mm. um, and uh, there has been some sort of diplomatic tensions because of that. Um, I won't go too much into the background of this possible Ukraine uh, invasion, um, but there, of course, Russia and Ukraine issues have always been at the geopolitical front for mm. years now. Mm-hmm. Um, Korea's foreign ministry, meanwhile, said some 50 Korean residents in Ukraine have actually expressed their wish to stay there despite urges for them to evacuate the country. Mm. Um, a level four travel advisory has been issued in all parts of Ukraine as of Sunday. Um, for those wishing to stay, the ministry has called on them to seek shelter and to ensure their safety and be uh, cautious. But uh, it, did, it did add that it will continue um, to persuade them to leave the country. Of I course, mean, we're talking about their livelihood, exactly, right? Exactly, I was about to say, And, and yeah. leaving, leaving uh, their closest neighbors and friends right. and colleagues. So, uh, and, and a lot of these interviews I'm seeing on, on the ground in Ukraine, mm-hmm. it seems to indicate that people who live there have seen such tensions escalate before, right. never at this scale perhaps. Mm-hmm. But uh, does it strike the same kind of sense of urgency from afar as it does at home I'm I'm not quite sure exactly that's a good point All right, uh, we'll leave it there for now but certainly not the last of it Mm -hmm. on to our fifth keyword of the day reduced tourism the local tourism industry as you can imagine has taken a hit during the pandemic in fact massively and recent data Mm -hmm. shows a significant cut in foreign visitors tell us the details yeah so according to the Korea Tourism Organization foreign tourists in Korea last year came to about 210,000 that's about 22% of the total number of foreign visitors that came to Korea last year Uh, the number of flight attendants interestingly doubled that of tourists which Mm -hmm. uh, is a bit strange because you'd think that if you see more flight attendants you see more tourists but that wasn't the case now the figure is also only 1.5 percent of pre-pandemic levels so that is (laughs) tiny Uh, so it does go to show the amount of uh, restricted travel that's happened during the pandemic Mm. now of the small number of tourists uh, americans took up the larger share at uh, about seventy thousand. Um, Tourists from the Philippines, Indonesia, China and Myanmar followed. Mm. Uh, Travel restrictions obviously playing a big part in the reduced tourist numbers. Um, Travel warnings and advisories as well. Uh, A lot of package tours that were sold in China, which were tended to be popular, Mm. uh, have been halted. Now, the number of Americans visiting Korea for travel may come down further, actually, as the U.S. Mm. government advised its citizens um, to avoid uh, Korea. All right. And on to our last keyword of the day. Steeper fine. Uh, And a steeper sting. Uh, Korea's antitrust regulator has increased the fine slapped on Google over alleged anti-competition practices. Mm -hmm. What's the latest? Yeah, so the Fair Trade Commission has Mm -hmm. raised the fine to 224.9 billion won. That is up by 17.5 billion won. Uh, The FTC initially slapped a 207 billion won fine last September for forcing smartphone makers into using only its Android mobile operating system. System. And so the FTC accused Google of cementing its market dominance in the mobile platform market and undermining innovation uh, in the development of new OS for smart devices. Now, the initial fine was calculated with the period of Google's law violations set from 
January 2011 to April 2021, mm. the last month for which its sales data was available at that time. Mm. The FTC updated the data and included it in the calculation of Google's revenues from May 2021 to September 10th, 2021. Mm. That's when the FTC's last review session on the issue was held. So it's basically an updated version. There's a longer time period, and that's why the fine went up. Mm. Uh, Google filed a lawsuit. It, of course, wasn't happy with it uh, <laughs> last month to overturn the regulator's mm-hmm. decision. It also separately applied for an injunction with the Seoul High Court um, on the decision, of which the trial will begin on February 25th, next Friday. All right, everyone. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Adam, for today's coverage. You're welcome. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.